Hey guys, today we're building a working 3D printed bear trap. Although it won't be the smoothest of journeys. So we have here our improved parts. So I'm gonna have two links below, one for some improved parts that someone's made and a link to the original one for the rest of the parts as well. So this is of course a 3D printed bear trap and it's pretty awesome. The design is cool as heck and these are our initial kind of parts, but we've also got some additional stuff that we're going to throw in as well. I've also gone and painted up the jaws so they're much more metallic looking now and added a little bit of red in there just to make them look a little bit more sinister. So we're going to start putting this together. Now there's no instructions on how to actually do this, but if you're going by the photos that are posted online, you can totally figure it out because it's relatively simple. You've got these two wings here that are the big springs. They go on first and then the jaws come down and they get locked into place. Now this is quite a complex bit because you have to hold down the spring. You got to put these bits in. You got to have both jaws in and then you have to get your pegs to go through and line up with everything so it's all locking in. And the jaws also have a little kind of tooth at the end of their pivot point so that they interlock. So you have to also get that correct as well. So it's quite a bit of actual uh, fiddling and uh, you might even honestly might be handy to have a second person just to hold something in place for you as it is pernickety. Uh, the other thing is the other spring on the other side already has to be down as well, preferably unless you want to bend the jaws, which I actually decided to go with. But that's where a second person could come in very handy just to help you keep all this stuff stable because you do have a lot of forces here that are trying to fight back against you because of course this is a spring loaded trap but there we go that's the kind of initial structure done now it's the mechanism for the release you've got two different bits that have to go in and they've got a couple of pegs with caps on the end now this is where i fell into major trouble um i initially just could not get these pegs to go in whatsoever then I thought I'll print them off 95% size and put them in. Still ended up having a bunch of issue getting them in. But uh, finally did get there. Had to use like a lot of clamping force and a lot of pressure, but eventually got it in. So much so that I don't think I need to stick the caps on because I don't think they're coming out uh, easily anyway, that's for sure. But then came the moment of truth. So this is the complete trap. It is actually fully complete. It's set, it's ready to go off. So of course, you just have to touch the center to have it go off and it didn't so i was like oh man so unfortunately the back part there that has to hinge up is just far too stiff way too stiff unfortunately so i need to solve this now my initial attempts were just to wiggle it and try and get it to loosen up more and then i also added some oil to it and i really tried a lot but none of that worked um, but I did get to the point where it was moving somewhat freely. So with it much more loose, I decided to have another go. So you can see me setting up here and getting it into position. And it's quite cool to set up. The me mechanism is really awesome. And it is now set and ready to go. And again, moment of truth. So pressure on the pad, nothing. It is releasing it from there, but you can see the pivot point here is so close to the actual thingy that it needs to be extra loose for it to come flying up. If that actual pivot point was further back, it would probably be a little bit easier to have it go off. So you can see, for instance, if I just do that, it goes off brilliant. So I just need to make sure this thing was even looser than it was. So I decided to disassemble the flipping part again, and this time I actually put a drill through and make the hole that it pivots on far wider and of course looser because this thing basically needs no friction whatsoever on that joint otherwise it's not going to go off so here it is in a looser state you can see i've got a uh, thing for it to grab and it works pretty goddamn good i'm actually i'm not putting my hand in it yet but i feel like it would probably hurt quite a bit because it's got some force it's not got any weight behind it because it's just empty plastic but it's got some goddamn force Anyway, what was going on here as I was, of course, trying to loosen up, I'd put a drill through it and it was still too stiff. Now, what I ended up kind of discovering here is that the parts that are on either side holding it in place, they were causing too much friction. So I just basically need to bend them out a little bit and that way overall get a little bit less uh, friction there because it, it really did need to be very, very loose to go off. 
which I think would be solved if, if this pivot point was further back and not so close to the actual jaw. But you can see here, this is almost perfect. You can see it's almost letting it go, but I noticed that the little pivot point is a little bit off angle, so I just reset it. And here we go, moment of truth. It goes off. So that was awesome. And it, it really does work amazingly well. I'm actually super impressed with how good it works. Like when you do get it working, it is freaking awesome. It is quite a complex build. I could also imagine like, and scaling this up like a hundred percent this thing would look freaking sweet and dangerous even though i don't think it'd be particularly dangerous even though i've not put my hand in it yet so there we go but yeah awesome awesome little 3d print very very cool and it works